As in, why does this piece of science matter? Why does it matter for our Canadian heritage? Why is it part of our national museums? And they're developing a very important science literacy skills that they're going to share with you today. They've not only had the opportunity to learn leadership skills to give them the confidence to present today, but they visited and toured the Canada Aviation and Space Museum, the Canada Agriculture and Food Museum, as well as our conservation laboratories where they've interacted with museum staff. And I can tell you I've heard nothing but amazing things about the work you guys have been doing with our staff and our team. They also had some pretty unique opportunities, as Wendy mentioned. Meeting David Saint-Jacques on Monday, our astronaut who's heading up into space in 2018, yay David. Um, as well as to introduce David and others to their So What in our Life and Orbit exhibition speaking to gravity, water recycling in space, and radiation and space research. One leader was able to appear on television yesterday to share their So What, and as well to spend time with our special guest who will be here later today with you. They've also had youth and teacher mentors along the way helping them out. So a big round of applause for Wendy, McPhee, Ebbs, and Nori Gowan for their work on this project. So we're just going to flip that website over because I have one more challenge I'm going to put out to you guys that you need to tackle. Not today, but in the weeks to come. The Canada Science and Technology Museum, which you guys probably know is closed until late into 2017, recently launched a national contest inviting students ages 4 to 19 to celebrate the role of creativity and the arts in science by submitting an original work of art that asks the question and answers, how does science inspire you? It's delivered in collaboration with House of Paint, and the contest reflects an evolution in the museum's core themes of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, known as STEM, to include the arts, becoming STEAM. The shift recognizes that creativity and the arts are often the inspiration for advances in the science spectrum. Local graffiti artists were going to replicate the five winning submissions onto a much larger mural on the hoarding walls at the museum's construction site later in June. Now, there's contest prizes valued up to $1,000 for the five winners for your classroom. Those include a 3D printer and some other cool stuff. Now, Queen Elizabeth, I know some of your students have already submitted some amazing works of art. We're probably seeing some of those up here. You have until June 6 to submit your deadlines, um, so I do encourage you to work on that. It's easy on our website, and uh, we'd love to see some great art coming from the schools that are here today. So I'm going to turn you back over to your hosts. I want to thank you. I hope you have an inspirational afternoon, and I know you're inspiring all of us at the museum. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Those were some wonderful words. And now moving on, we're going to introduce our guest speaker, and her name is Simone Yach. She is a professional YouTuber from uh, Sweden. She specializes in robotics and she'll be co-hosting in a YouTube channel called Tested with Adam Savage, the guy from Mythbusters. So everyone, welcome Simone. Hey. hey everybody. How are you? You're good. Can we are we getting a little bit of feedback on my mic? It's good. And hey to the people on the internet watching this too. So people watching the live stream. So my name is Simone Yach and I'm Should I stand here at the podium? No, you could believe. I built very bad robots, so now you could think that I'd actually built those microphones, but I have not. Should I just, is it okay if I just talk? Yeah. No, I have to stand here. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about the importance of building useless things, or at least why it has been very important to me. And I'm going to start with a story from when I was eight years old. And I was this really happy, cheerful kid. <laughs> and I had an idea that I wanted to build a robot. But I didn't know how to do it, because building robots is really complicated. How do you even get started? But one thing I did know how to do was to work with wood. So the way I built my robot was I got a block of wood, and I drilled a hole through it. And then I put a stick through the hole. And the way this was a robot, brace yourselves, the way this was a robot was that if you wiggled one end of the stick, the other end would move too. And eight-year-old Simone was like, it's alive! And I know what you're all thinking. You're like, 
God damn, this girl's a genius. Somebody should throw a ton of money at her. But looking at my robot as a grown-up, I realize it's not that good. I don't think it even qualifies as a robot. But that's one of the biggest differences. Are we trying this? Is this fine? No? Oh. building at things as a grown-up is that when you're building things as a kid nobody really expects you to build useful things and most of all sometimes you don't even expect it of yourself so I was really happy with my robot when I built it a lot of things have changed since I was eight years old I'm a lot happier nowadays but <laughs> but one thing I don't look happy no I know and this thing this was a really the, yeah but that's the joke is it falling flat? Yeah, maybe. My sister took this photo. It was actually a really good day. I'm just, that my face just does that, I think. I'm actually happy in this photo, for real. Anyway, but one thing that hasn't changed is that I still build a lot of things. So, you know when you're at, I'm gonna show you one of my inventions, and you know when you're, you're at, a, at a theater or, or at the movies, and you have to clap your hands a lot. Even now when you're here, you have to clap your hands a lot. And it gets pretty tiring, right? Sometimes your hands even start hurting. Maybe not, maybe it's just when you get older. My hands start hurting and I thought there must be a better way to do this. Maybe I can build a machine that can clap its hands for me. So I built the applause machine. And this machine is great for when you have hands but you don't wanna use them. But the next one I'm gonna show you is great for when you have hands, but you don't want to have them anymore. Because I built a machine to help me chop vegetables. Please don't do this at home. Your parents are going to be very upset with me then. <laughs> but by some weird miracle, this has actually become my job. This is what I do for a living. So I run a YouTube channel about, about robots, and people have even started calling me the queen of shit. Oh, probably can't say that. Uh, the, the queen of, of not-so-perfect robots? <laughs> oh, you have a channel? I'll subscribe to your channel. And that brings, me, that brings me to the first point as to why it's important to build useless things. I'm just going to, just look away now. Oh, 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 no, just look away. <laughs> because if you find the things you do interesting, there are probably other people who do too. And this was how I got started doing what I do today. Because I just built these robots because I thought it was fun. I just did it for myself. But I started posting them online, and it turned out that there were a lot of other people who liked them too. So a lot of weird things started happening because the people who liked it, they started sharing it. And then even more people started sharing it. And then all these different magazines started writing about it. And then people like Conan O'Brien tweeted about it. I'm realizing just now, do you know who Conan O'Brien is? Oh, you know, okay, good, good, yeah. Because otherwise this would not be as cool. Yeah, this clip, by the way, has been viewed around 80 million times. So there's a chance that I am the person in the entire world that most people have seen getting slapped in the face with a rubber arm. Just, just putting it out there. And all these different TV shows started showing it. This is a Japanese TV show, I showed my breakfast machine. What a breakfast, very filling. 
And this is, once again, this is what it all comes back to. If you find the things you do interesting, there are probably other people who do too. I never planned for any of this to happen. I just did stuff that I thought was fun, and then other people tagged along. And I understand that my example might be a little bit extreme, but I think even if there's only just one other person who liked what you're doing, that's enough. So a lot of people think that I'm an engineer, but I'm actually not. I, I'm self-taught in both hardware and software, so I'm so self-taught robot builder. And I think that when you're building things, one of the best ways to learn how to build things is by building them. So I, I think learning by doing is a really powerful tool, and that's like not only reading about it in a book, but actually learning by trying things out. So when you're learning by doing in science, it's about trying science out. And, and learning by doing is, is maybe, I mean, it's great for many things, but maybe it's not really great if you're a doctor. I, I'm thinking learning by doing is not a good idea. You can't be like, oh, I've actually never done this before, dear patient, but let's just try cutting a little bit here and see what happens. So, so learning by doing is not a great idea. Or if you're an airplane pilot, it's maybe not a great idea because you're like, Shh, ladies and gentlemen, I have never before flown an aircraft, but I'm Googling it right now, so please take your seat. But if you're learning how to build things, I would say it's the best way to learn. And it's actually how I got started. And always when I build stuff, it's very focused on the idea. I have this idea that I really like, and then there are just a bunch of things I have to learn along the way to build this. So I like to think of it as ideas first and tools later. And to me, this really makes sense. But in school often, and especially when you get older, when you're in high school and university, often it's the other way around. You learn a lot of tools, and then maybe you get to apply them to different things. But I'm very ideas first, tools later. And, and the idea that got me into hardware was actually to build, so you know websites, right? It's not a trick question, you know websites. And websites, they live on the internet, right? They're digital. They're, like, they're not like a shirt or like a bottle of water. They're digital, right? So my idea was, how would it be if you built a website that was physical so you could actually touch it and play around with it? And what this idea came down to was that I wanted to build a website that was a live webcam broadcast. So this like gray square would just be a live feed. And it would be like these blocks of wood. And when a user pressed any of these buttons on the website, the block of wood would turn. So basically, you would control it over the internet. And at this time, I'd programmed a few websites. I'd done a little bit of website programming. But I had no idea how to make the internet talk to physical things. How can you move something? When somebody presses a button on a website, how can you make something move in real life? But I remembered, have you, have you heard the expression, all roads lead to Rome? Yeah. yeah? So the internet, on the internet, the equivalent of that is that everything on the internet leads to cats. Because what I remembered was that I see this website, it was a cat shelter, and they had this website where you could go online and you could play with the cats. So you'd basically press one of these buttons and then these cat toys would move around. And I was like, yeah, this is, I mean, this is the same thing as I want to do, right? So I contacted the company, I was like, hey, how have you built this? And they were very, they were like, oh, sorry, miss, we're kind of the only people in the entire world that do this, so we can't tell you it's a trade secret. And I was like, what? How can you not tell me? But what I did find was the open source hardware community. And what that means, what open source means is that everybody shares the work they do. They're not very like, oh, this is my, this is my idea or, or this is my technology. Everybody shares the stuff. And that's what I really love about it. So these here are computers. They're tiny computers. They're about, yeah, the biggest one there is about this height. And they're very good, to, they're not very smart, like they're not as smart as your laptop, but they're very good at controlling motors or reading temperature or different things. They're very good at interacting with the physical world. And I have these in almost every of my projects. They're kind of the brain in the project. And I'm actually, I brought a project. Oh wow, there's a riot out there. Oh, now it's gone. So this is actually my latest project. It's a hair washing robot that uh, washes your hair for you. I'm gonna leave the mic now for a little bit. But you still see this little thing right here? Because I was thinking like, why, you guys in the group were like, like why are you talking about this? We're just gonna see if this works. And, and right here on top, we have the computer, and then there's two motors that it controls. Let's 
see if it works. Thank you. Uh, so, so yeah, I use these in all, almost every of my projects. And that leads me to the last point about why it's important to build useless things. What was that? Should I subscribe to you? Oh, wow. He's really eager to get a new subscriber. Oh, wow. You have a lot of YouTube channels. Well, that's good. What? what was <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> The last reason why it's important to build useless things. Because your ideas might be smarter than you. Good ideas might turn out to be bad, and bad ideas might turn out to be good, but you won't know unless you actually build them and try them out. So it's kind of like that time when I realized that Mona Lisa doesn't have any eyebrows. <laughs> have you ever thought about that? She doesn't have any eyebrows. So. Oh, you've thought about that? I, I, was, I was awestruck first time I thought about that. I was like, whoa. It's true. My life is a lie. And, and I thought, I can fix that. <laughs> and this is a pretty bad idea with a bad outcome, but at least I tried, right? So another example is, I, I thought, can I have a robot put on makeup on me, put on lipstick? So I tried to program a robot arm to do it. <laughs> I think that was a pretty good idea but the outcome wasn't that good, maybe. But a more serious example, and I love using the word serious whenever I talk about my toothbrush helmet. A more serious example is my toothbrush helmet. Because I posted this, this is actually the first project that I posted online, and the first one that started going viral. And I posted it online, and what surprised me was that I got a lot of, I mean, I got a lot of comments, but I got a lot of comments from people who were like, hey, Simone, we understand this is just for fun, but this would actually be amazing for people with mobility issues. And that just blew my mind, because here I am, I've built something only for fun and because I can't find other stuff to spend my time on, and, and somebody actually finds a legit use case in that. So your ideas might be smarter than you. So now, in, in honor of useless contraptions, I would want to do a brainstorming exercise with you. Have you ever done a brainstorming exercise? Yes, yeah. yeah, some of you. It's good fun. So we're going to do one. It's one of my favorites. It's called the brick. So what I want you to do is I want you to find, turn to the person sitting next to you, and I'm going to give you three minutes. I'm going to give you three minutes to come up with as many use cases for a brick as you possibly can. And no ideas are bad ideas. Anything works. So the first one is building block. But what else can you use a brick for? Can you use it as a, as a plate? A question? Shh, 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 shh. Question? OK, OK, wait. I'm going to give you three minutes and then just talk to each other and come up with as many ideas as you can. Are you ready? OK, go. So you have two minutes left. Let's see if anyone can get to 
30 ideas. 30 ideas with a brick. Thirty seconds left. Let's try to come up with two more ideas. Thirty seconds. I'm confined back here again. The what? Is this good? Okay. Uh, last one. What about you? A dog f food or water bowl. Yeah, that's legit. I thought you said football. For <laughs> and I was like, well, sure, that's going to hurt a lot. So what I really like about this exercise is the your, what was that? Roller skates, wow. A plane for a homeless. Well, you have a lot of ideas. Okay, you know what? We can talk more. We can talk more about the ideas later, but I'm impressed by your creativity. This is really good. So what I like about this exercise is that it forces you to think outside of good ideas because you're very quickly gonna run out of good ideas, right? And you have to take some that are like a little bit hmm, and then in the end of it, you're even out of ideas that are a little bit hmm, and then you have to get into bad ideas. And I think that's where a lot of the creativity happens. Because it might not be that you use a brick for it, but maybe you find something else in that. Maybe you can use something else to build that idea you had. 
So thank you so much for listening. I'm at Simon Yach on pretty much all social media. And yeah, thank you to our live streamers for watching too. And thank you so much to the Space and Aviation Museum for having me. Yeah. Thank you. We'll have some questions now. So does anyone have questions for Simone? Raise your hand. Uh, you choose. Um, yes. What's, What's your Snapchat name? Uh, it's, it's at Simone Yash as well. I think, but I'm not very good at Snapchat. I don't understand it. I'm just always. I don't know how to get the funny faces. No, yeah, they just. You you you're you're supposed to hold your face. supposed to hold your face, yeah. I just never, and I don't understand because like, a lot of people add me do I have to add them back? Because then I'm going to get. I don't know. But yeah, Simone, yeah, I try. I try my best. Okay, how about uh, you over there? How many places have you visited and did this presentation? With this presentation? Yeah. I've. Uh, two, not that many. I've mainly given it. So I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. And I've mainly given the talk there. But I've done it. Yeah, this is. I think this is the first time I traveled with it, actually. No, I, I, was, in, I was in Hong Kong. Okay, yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay, um, how about you over there? How many countries have you been presenting this? This talk? How many times I presented it? Like, how many I, countries you've been How many countries you've been in? Overall? What? Just overall? Throughout my life? No. I think I've been, I counted, I've been, I've lived in four countries. Uh, but I have been, I think it was like 27 or something. I traveled a lot when I was younger. Um, okay, um, uh, when you were in Japan, was the food like, like, in like China, like, was it good? The Chinese food? Yeah, yeah gosh. I, but I, I used to live in China, so I moved to China as an exchange student when I was 16 in high school. And gosh, I'm just hooked on Chinese food. It's my favorite. It's, it's so good. Yeah, I can eat for days. Okay, um, you and Beth all over there. Yep, you. Do you, you. Did you first use Lego Mindstorm before you actually built robots? Mindstorm? Yeah. No, so like when I was growing up, I don't think we had Mindstorms. I played with Lego a lot, but I I just started, I, I didn't really start in that way. Um, okay, yeah. um, but I, I, would, I would really want to try Mindstorm out. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, how about... Uh, how many major YouTubers? So how many major YouTubers have I met? Yeah, I met this guy over here. Um, yeah, you and all of you.
be too concerned with what you know or not know. And just if you have something that you want to build, just take it from that. Figure out how to build it, and, and just you're going to learn along the way. I think I've never learned anything in the way that, or, or with hardware or programming, by like opening a book and being like, okay, let's learn about transistors. It's always been like, oh, I have this thing I really want to build. How can I do it? So I think that's just finding good ideas that you really feel strongly for, and then just learning by doing. Can I choose one? Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So have you watched the Ellen show? Yes. Do you want it? Sweetest. And I haven't been, I haven't been a guest on it, but she showed one of my videos. She showed the alarm clock. Uh, and it was, and I didn't know about it, so I just woke up to a bunch of people having written me and like, oh, I remember the Ellen show. It was very weird. Yeah. How many subscribers do I have? I think I'm at 178,000 subscribers. How long did it take to get that many subscribers? So I started, I mean, I've had my YouTube channel for a long time, but I used to only put up like sketches and, and comedy in Swedish, and that never like, did really well. I just did it for fun. But this, I started, I published my first, uh, The Truth First Hellamite, I think it was eight years ago, or eight months ago. Eight years ago. Eight months ago. So it's been about, yeah. We started, I started working with it full time about half a year ago. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Do you have a boyfriend? If I have a boyfriend. Oh my God.